Well, hello, my lovelies. It's Murky Meg here. It's Friday the 28th of October, and today I'm going to be discussing the thing that's on everybody's lips, the thing that everybody is speaking about. That's right, Harry's book. Publication date has been announced, and that is the 10th of January. And as always in spectacular style, they always choose the dates well, don't they? Because that is a day after Princess of Wales's birthday, Catherine. And if you remember correctly, two years ago, and next year in January it will be three years ago, they did the same thing on her birthday, but a day before. On the 8th of January 2020, they announced that they were leaving the royal family. Why does it always happen around poor Catherine's birthday? What an amazing birthday present. Anyway, this is the cover. When I first saw this, I genuinely thought it was a parody. I thought it was a mock-up, but it's the actual cover. And I'm still trying to get my head around the name of the book, Spare. Now, I want to draw your attention to what Harry said when it was first released and the news hit that he was writing a memoir. He said, I'm writing this not as the prince I was born, but as the man I have become. Yet he names it Spare. Now, if anybody doesn't know, the reason he's named it Spare is because of the very famous saying, the heir and the spare, meaning the heir to the throne and the spare in case anything happens. And in fact, it's been a long tradition that the heir and the spare have always been called that. In fact, Diana called Harry the spare herself. It's shockingly priced at $28 or £28. That is a humongous amount of money for a book. I don't even think Barack Obama, Michelle Obama, I don't think anybody else's biographies have ever been that high. It is a shockingly high price for a book. But funnily enough, even though it was only announced yesterday, two major booksellers in the UK, that's WH Smith's and Waterstone's, are already touting it for half price. Yep, 14 quid. Knocked it off, half price there and then. 28 quid. Jeez. It's a lot of money, but people will buy it. Unfortunately, people will buy it because they like the salacious gossip. So the publishers printed out their PR piece, said spare the highly anticipated memoir of Prince Harry, the Duke of Sausage. Sausage? I keep... Do you know what? I've not called him the Duke of Sausage for a long time, but I'm tired. The Duke of Sussex. There we are. I'll just refer to him the Duke of Sausage still. To be published globally on January the 10th, 2023 by Penguin Random House. Spare. Simultaneous publications in 16 languages worldwide. New York, October 27, 2022. Spare the memoir of Prince Harry. The Duke of Sausage will be published globally on January 10th, 2023 by Penguin Random House. It was announced today by Marcus Dole, global CEO of Penguin Random House Worldwide. The book cover image was also released and can be viewed at this link again i still think it's a parody it uh, oh it's it's it oh god too too many memes have been going around social media they're absolutely hilarious anyway spare will be released simultaneously in print and digital formats in north america by random house us random house canada and the united kingdom by transworld a spanish language edition spare en la sombra will be published by plaza and jade's Anyway, blah, 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 blah. I'm not going to read the rest of that. An unbridged audio edition of the book read by the author, i.e. Prince Harry, or released by Penguin Random House. The book's acquisition, blah, 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 spared, takes readers immediately back to one of the most searing images of the 20th century. Two young boys, two princes, walking behind their mother's coffin as the world watched in sorrow and horror as Diana, Princess of Wales, was laid to rest. Billions wondered what the princes must be thinking and feeling and how their lives would play out from that point on. For Harry, this is his story at last. With its raw, unflinching honesty, Spare is a landmark publication full of insight, revelation, self-examination and hard-won wisdom. (laughs) I'm sorry, I couldn't hold it together after hard-won wisdom. About the eternal power of love over grief. I'm sorry, did Markle write this? Penguin Random House is honoured to be publishing Prince Harry's candid and emotionally powerful story for readers everywhere. He shares a remarkable moving personal journey 
from trauma to healing, one that speaks to the power of love and will inspire and encourage millions of people around the world. Prince Harry wishes to support British charities with donations from his proceeds from Spare. The Duke of Sausage has donated one and a half million to Senebol and will donate 300,000 to Wellchild. I'm a bit confused because I thought he said the advance were going to Senebol and blah, blah, blah. No. I mean, half a million to Senebolt, yeah, but he's made more, he's going to make so much money off of this. And the uh, advance, he's probably been paid as well. It, I've got, I, there's so much I want to say about this. I, I physically can't get my words out because everything is fizzing in my brain, but the, the cover itself paints and screams a victim. If he was writing it as the man he's become, why is he calling it Spare? He's just the perpetual victim isn't he and I just think that the whole royal family is still grieving and I think it's incredibly bad taste to do this but hey when has the Harry ever run by anybody else's rules I find it quite shocking he's entitled to tell his story but word on the street is that he's gone guns blazing at his father Camilla William and Catherine and that they are all braced for impact and that their lawyers are ready and waiting. And I do find it really weird that in the press release, it says that the personal journey from trauma to healing and love over grief completely contradicts the title of the book, which is Spare. You know, Harry hasn't been the spare for nine years since Prince George came along. He hasn't been the spare since then, yet he's still holding on to the past. He's still dragging up that grief. And I believe that he will never, ever, ever stop. He paints this victim and this grief-stricken child. And yes, everybody did watch in horror, but William was there too. But it's this stuck in grief, yet it was Diana herself that called him the spare. If he's going to be talking about the difficulties of his childhood, his his life. You cannot take away the fact that he's lived an incredibly privileged life with a very expensive silver spoon in his mouth. Now that doesn't take away the trauma that he's gone through, but it makes it a hell of a lot better. And by releasing this book, speaking of the trauma, he hears himself inflicting trauma on his family members. But that's okay, Harry, isn't it? Because you're getting a payday and you're finally having your say. So well done, old chap. Well done. Inflict your trauma and project it onto other people. Great. Now, other famous people have done powerful autobiographies. And the most important thing in any autobiography is the title. It's got to represent exactly the theme of the book and what they themselves how they see themselves and how they represent themselves. For example, Nelson Mandela, his was a long walk to freedom. Barack and Michelle Obama's, hers was called Becoming, his was called A Promised Land. An autobiography of Captain Tom was called Tomorrow Will Be a Good Day. I do find it interesting that the same ghostwriter that's done Harry's autobiography also wrote Andre Agassi's autobiography called Open and it looks the cover looks exactly the same look at this isn't that funny put the two together almost identical apart from just different men on the cover same ghostwriter but my point is that a title of an autobiography should sum up a person should sum up what is best about them what their life represents and naming it Spare is tainting everything that's within it because it just reeks of jealousy and resentment. It's been said that the 416 page memoir, which is excessive for a memoir, I have to add, is critical of everyone and everything and it does not bode well. That family members weren't told its title spare in advance and they found out when we found out. So this is being published just four months after the Queen passed and it will be just months before his own father's coronation. And I just think it's, it, a lot of people are shaking their heads in despair at, at all of this. I just can't get over why he's called it spare. I mean, that's what he wants people to think he is because ultimately that's what he's put on his autobiography. Is it autobiography? Have I said that right? Oh, please excuse me today. My words are getting well and truly fuddled. 
And I know fuddled isn't a word, but it's, it's, I have this thing in my family. I make up words. Uh, I, instead of saying uh, weak and feeble, I say feek and weeble. Um, it's part of my dyslexia <laughs> and I just get the muddle. But fuddled is a, what we call in my household, a kizzyism, because kizzy is my name, uh, or a kizzyism. Um, words that I think are real, uh, but don't actually exist. So I've just made them up myself. So it's um, fuddled. Yes. Scrap that. I've just Googled it. Fuddled is a word. Yay, I'm not wrong. Oh, I'm going to write off today. Really, really am. Anyway, one saving grace. Thank God he was the spare. Thank God he wasn't the heir. That's all I can say. He was brought up with opportunities and privilege that most of us can only dream of. He is that one percent of the world that never has to worry about anything but he has painted himself as the perpetual victim and I just thank God he was the spare. I really really do because this is just gonna do so much damage. I'd just like to reiterate, he stopped being the spare nine years ago and yet he still holds a grudge. That is not a man getting over trauma. That is a man living it, breathing it, monetizing it. So I would love to know your thoughts on this. What did you think of the front cover? Did you, like me, think it was a parody and a meme? Did you think, ah, oh, they've just knocked that up, that's really funny, and then actually realise, oh, it's actually the title. Why on earth, when it was announced that he was doing a memoir, did he say that he was writing it, not of the prince that he was born with, but the man he's become, then named it quintessentially spare. It's at complete polar opposites of the spectrum, isn't it? What do you think it will contain? Do you think it's going to be completely guns blazing for the royal family? Or do you think it will be slightly toned down? I personally think he's going to go guns blazing. And I think this ultimately could really do some damage. And I think the royal family should brace themselves for impact. As always, I would love to know your thoughts. Thank you very much for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, hit the notification bell and also that like button. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all of my followers for all the tips and all the emails, DMs that everybody sends to me. It really is greatly appreciated. So thank you very much for watching once again.